switch here. You can turn it off. Any so we have had some really bad weather. We had 50 mile an hour winds roughly and it just blew everything. These are walk walkways that take you down to the beach and there's a, about three of them and they're all tore up and threw everything over. We ended up getting a bunch of uh, sand up here and water and it just kind of made a hell of a mess once again. But uh, anyway, we're gonna we're gonna uh, get to work here, get a little bit done. But I want to do uh, get a little video done for you guys and uh, on kind of living in the uh, the van uh, or living in the camper or small spaces. So we are down at the beach shack, and we're gonna try and get uh, some work uh, done here to get it ready to set up. We're starting to get some of it. Okay guys, I figured I'd give you a little idea as to what, what it's like to live in an RV or living in a camper, uh, living in a tiny house, living in any small space or small structure, what it's like and what it's, uh, what the goods, the bads, and the in-betweens. And, um, you know, I guess the first thing I could say is you can't be lazy is probably the key thing. You just can't because you're always kind of in a little bit of a survival mode, which I like it. So a lot of people probably don't because if you're lazy, it's not going to work for you. And what I mean by that survival mode is, you know, you've got to get your water, you've got to get your food, you've got to get, to, you've got to cook in there. You've got to, uh, I mean, you don't have to cook in there, but if you want to, can, you know, change, uh, save money or whatever, that's kind of what you have to do. So um, there's just, you know, a lot of things that you've got to do. You've got to get to the bathrooms. You've got to get rid of your garbage. You've got to keep your place clean. Um, you know, you've got to go get fuel. You've got to get, you know, find your spots where you're going to stay. Of course, and if you're working and stuff like I'm doing, um, it's even it's even harder. Probably the four, the four things that are probably extremely important, I think, in having that small space is uh, probably number one is the shower thing and some people you know some people can put a shower in their in their van or in their RV or whatever you've got a camper you've got a, an RV or something like that it has a shower again uh, that's really convenient because staying clean and having a nice shower really means a lot every day or every at least every other day now the doubt the downsides to that is, yeah, you're going to have to dump that that uh, that gray water tank, and you're going to be in limited supply of your water. And you have to find a place to get your water. So those are the kind of things I mean by not, you know, by you can't be lazy. You're always, you know, doing things. Kind of like being on a boat. You're always fixing stuff. You're always moving. You're always uh, doing. You're always searching for your food. Your, you know, your water and things. You know, uh, all of that stuff. Probably the second big thing, and like I said, there's a ton of things you can do about showers, and you can cover each one of these in a video, and maybe I'll do that. But probably the second thing that's extremely important, um, I think, is, of course, uh, the again, the toilet. Now, I don't find it to be a big problem when it comes to, um, it's easier for a man than a woman, I think, without a doubt. Um, men can use a, a you know container and then uh, empty that you know uh, in a receptacle or whatever. Um, some people again have toilets and that, but now you're going to deal with great you know black water tanks and all that stuff. So again, uh, you've got that problem. Um, so you know, I where I'm at most of the time where I park or whatever, you can always you know find a public bathroom and, and you can go and and hit a public bathroom or whatever. And it works out pretty good. Um, so, you know, I'm just hitting these on a light note. Like I said, each one could be a video on this. Um, power is probably your next one. And, uh, you know, without a doubt, um, power is, uh, is huge when it comes to, you know, just having, uh, enough power to be able to charge your camera equipment, which I have and your laptops and that, maybe watch a movie, um, you know, um, powering maybe a couple of, you know, bigger devices or whatever. You can use the generator and run things that way. Um, you know, a couple dollars a day by doing that. You can run the solar panels on top, come down and do it that way. That's a great way to go. Just do it on a, on a small basis, 300 watts of solar with a couple of batteries and an inverter and, and uh, you know, a 1,000 watt inverter or a 2,000 watt inverter and you're good to go. And you can pretty much, I think, keep up with power. Now in Michigan, it's gonna be a little different because we have so many cloudy days. We have, in, in, in my area, it's 160, 162 days 162 days of of uh, 
of no, you know, no sun. Uh, it's just what it is here. Um, so you kind of want to uh, account for that. And probably the fourth thing that I find is, is you know, that, that huge thing is uh, refrigeration. If I spelt that right or not, refrigeration. Um, you know, being able to have uh, some cold stuff, especially in a warm climate, you know, um, being able to have, uh, you know, cold drinks, being able to have food, stuff that's perishable that you can kind of, you know, maybe a cold beer or whatever. Um, you know, ice, I think is, you know, it's okay, but I don't think you really need it. I'm trying to keep an eye on Bella here. And I'll show you Bella. Bella's becoming uh, extremely, uh, um, I guess, comfortable in, in finding anything to destroy, chew up or whatever. Um, but refrigeration, there's a ton of ways to go about that. Some people go like a Yeti cooler, one of them high-end coolers. Um, I don't know some of the other off brands of, of Yeti, but there's a ton of them out there that have come off of the Yeti. Um, I do believe in the Yeti products. I think they're overpriced, but I do believe in that product. And you can use a Yeti cooler and put a bag of ice in there and you can get seven days out of that. So that is, a, that is an option for sure, especially in Michigan in the northern climate, because we don't get much of 80 degree weather, not here anyway, a little bit, but very, very, very minimal. Um, now in a hotter climate, I think you want uh, the Dometic or uh, Winter or um, what's the other one, uh, big ones out there. Um, a Dometic Winter, and uh, there's one other one. They're, they're all excellent. Um, they all have those uh, Ger German or European uh, compressors in them. They run off 12 volt. They use very, 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 very little electricity. They're amazing. I, I totally believe in those products. Again, they're 600 bucks, 500 bucks. They're not cheap, but they are they are well worth it because they uh, they end up. Uh, lasting quite a long time and they just take very 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 little power you can generally keep those running on a couple of batteries or at least for sure uh you know two batteries maybe three batteries at the most you can keep them rolling pretty pretty decent and uh, you can set them you don't need to set them at 36 degrees you can set them at probably the highest threshold you want maybe even 38 39 degrees and they'll cycle on cycle off and do a pretty good job i'm a big fan of the dometic three-way which is propane uh ac and uh dc um but again you know you're looking at a thousand bucks and they're they're kind of built in they're really nice because i i you know you can run them on propane with a tank of propane and you can get a couple weeks out of it without any trouble i've done it many times in an in an rv and in a in a trailer and uh we'll uh we'll give you a little view here of bella as i say bella's doing well but um a complete pain in the caboose but she is, uh, she's doing well. She's just chewing everything up, everything. Chewed up a seat cover yesterday, not terribly. It's, you know, again, it's my, it's an old truck. I had to redo things um, because I had to put the cage in the back of the truck and she's just gonna have to, not in the back back, but in behind the seat. And she's just gonna have to ride in there because she's chewing up the shifting handle, chewing up the steering wheel. She's just chewing on everything. We're gonna try and find her something today and uh, that we can put a treat in and then they can chew on that and try to find the treat. I'll let her continue walking around here in the beach shack. Um, but uh, yeah, she's just getting into everything, but you know, she'll get out of that stage sooner or later, but she's doing well. She'll, she'll fetch and I'll show some more videos of her. Um, I did start an Instagram account for her so you guys can follow her. I'll try to put something up every day of her uh, the best I can. Um, I'm gonna get a new camera, I think this week, um, a new phone which uh, will shoot 1080p and it's, you know, it's got, a, it's just a better phone. I've had the other one for three years. It's all busted and cracked. So these, in my opinion, living in the RV or camper, tiny house, boat, whatever you want to call it, these are all the main things. And I think shower is probably the main one. Um, power is probably second, probably then the toilet. Well, maybe then for refrigeration and toilet last. Um, you know, on a boat, of course, you've got a head. On a tiny house, you can actually put a, uh, another toilet in. I would do the composting toilet, uh, such as the nature's head, or I forget the other one, um, the other big one that's out there. Um, you know, it's, been, it's basically the same as the nature's head. Those are, those are amazing. I would, I would have no, no problem uh, investing in those. But again, it's a thousand bucks and I, you know, just don't have a thousand bucks to throw out, out for one of them at this point. 
Um, maybe this summer, because again, I think, you know, if you get a nature's head and you can just keep it and it can be transferred. I mean, I've done this RV thing and this RV living now for 12 years and I did it a lot when I was younger too, um, just not on a, on a kind of a full, full time basis. But, uh, so anyway, those are the things. And like I said, you know, some of the biggest, uh, the biggest things that I find is, you cannot be lazy if you're going to do this kind of thing, and you cannot be material. You, you're yeah, materialistic. You've got to be kind of a little bit on the minimal, minimalism, and it does force you to be that way. Um, I just threw a few things out this morning that I've carried around, and I'm like, nope, I, it's got to go. There's no sense in having that. My most important things that I have for me is my laptop because that is my only form of it really entertainment such as the internet and movies and 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 of course editing and and uh, writing letters and you know doing stuff you know it, that way emails and all those things and my other other stuff is my cameras i've got three cameras and i'm gonna i'm gonna grab the maverick uh the mavic spark i think this week i think friday we're gonna actually run down and get the spark um and i say we will be me and bella and i think my daughter is gonna go down uh, my daughter is actually living in her van and i'll link her channel she's trying to get footage up and my daughter's working seven days a week she works at the hospital full-time 40 hours a week and then she's also bartending and uh, making some extra money to try and get her van done up and whatever but she's going to stay in the van and live in it for the entire um you know the entire summer about four months and then i'm not sure what we got planned we may she's talking about maybe wanting to go out west and 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 of course i'm definitely going to go out west that's kind of what what's going on a little bit um let's see here yeah i'll link her channel you guys can follow you know a little bit along there um she's just cutting back on $900 a month rent and all that stuff with the television and the internet and all those things. And she's cut back on all of that and that's going to save her $900 a month that she can put in the bank. And some of that we can continue to work on her van. I went to the island just to up, upgrade, update just real quick. I went to the island for three days of work. Um, I did, couldn't have tips there because it was a state marina, which I didn't know that they didn't accept tips or let us accept tips as boating and that. Um, so that knocks me way down in, in wages. Um, it was only 9.35 an, 9 an hour. So it was really uh, very, very, uh, uh, very minimal on the wages and that. So I called back down here and they wanted to open the beach shack another another uh, summer. And I said, well, I, can I come and run that? Because it's I was you know making $2 more an hour here. So I just told the guy and talked to him and you know he was fine with it uh, no big deal but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna work for nothing it's just that's just insane I just refuse to work for I, I have a limit I'm not gonna I'm not working for nine dollars an hour it's just that's just insane I mean there's I can pick up bottles and cans and sell firewood and do whatever and, and make that kind of money I mean it's just silly to sit and work 40 hours a week doing that not gonna do it you know what I'm making here is like I said, two two dollars, a little a little over two dollars more an hour. It's doable. It's a pretty easy job. It's pretty minute when it comes to I kind of do what I want, so to speak, and I run my own schedule. I also picked up another another little uh, deal where I'm going to run some uh, deliveries for a guy that has just bought a business and uh, it works out it's a couple of days a week and it's in the mornings before we open the shack and it's a couple hours and that's an extra hundred dollars in, in cash so that's going to be a, a good gig and like I said I'm trying to save up enough so we can actually get out west and uh, and uh, you know do some stuff and then maybe go to Baja or something like that and uh, for the winter so that's kind of the plan of things but anyway I'll try and do some more stuff I did organize the uh, back of the uh, the uh, camper a little bit and just to kind of give you as a give you as a little update on that the plan is that the camper and the truck and all that I'm gonna get rid of all that and I'm gonna sell all that and try and pick up another van and get that kind of decked out probably a cargo van that's the plan for the summer so anyway, I've rambled on quite a bit on this. It's hard to hit all the points in such a short time. I do plan on doing some other things, a live stream here soon, a podcast possibly, and be able to cover this stuff more in an hour. Um, you can't do it in these 10 minutes or 11 minutes. It's just almost impossible to cover all this stuff. Fair winds and following seas, guys. Peace out.